Hey, my name's Tony, welcome to my channel. Today we're talking barbecue, and uh, I gotta tell you this video you're about to watch, this one hour long video, is going to be painful. And if you have the mental fortitude to get through every single minute of this video, I gotta tell you, you're probably a multimillionaire, or you're gonna be for sure, because you can accomplish anything, okay? This video is, uh, I feel like my most important video yet, because it's covering a topic that is uh, super imperative to good barbecue when you're using, very specifically, when you're using an offset smoker, a, a wood stick burner to um, create Texas style barbecue. And the, the biggest problem that I see all the time that people talk about in the different groups is controlling temperature and controlling quality of smoke. And those two things really go hand in hand, and it's kind of difficult to figure out how to make them work right together. So in this video, it's actually me barbecuing a few racks of ribs, and I'm using only wood, just wood, and, and I explain why I'm using just wood. And I literally show you like every little step I go through. I run into all kinds of problems, stuff's happening, I gotta react to all kinds of stuff, so the camera, I'm freaking moving it all over the place. I'm rambling on forever, a lot like I'm doing right now, and that's what I'm doing. And it's really difficult to actually uh, do what I'm doing, and you know, to, to barbecue and control my fire and everything like that. It's really hard to do that. Well, I've got a camera in one hand, and I'm trying to talk and explain what's happening in the other hand. So what, uh, what you'll see me do in this video, and all the goofy things that happens, and the, the problems I have to deal with, are, are amplified 10 times by me, my mind being elsewhere, talking to you and, and holding a camera with my hand. And so the camera's all over the place. I apologize for the really crappy quality of that video that you're gonna see. But tell you what, if you get through the whole thing, you're gonna see all the different little things that I go through and all the steps that I have to take and all the, the problems I have to overcome so that I can maintain the right temperature for this barbecue and most importantly, maintain a really, really good quality of smoke because uh, the quality of the smoke is even more intent, more important than the temperature that's happening inside the cook chamber. So, but, but you gotta do both, and it's really hard. And so if you get through this whole thing, I think that your next attempt at barbecuing, uh, Texas style offset smoke or barbecue, is gonna be a lot better. And um, I look forward to hearing your comments about this. This is gonna be nuts, so hang in there, all right? Here we go. Good smoke, bad smoke, good smoke, bad smoke, good smoke, bad smoke, good smoke, bad, bad, bad smoke, good smoke, bad smoke, much better, bad smoke, bad, bad smoke. As you can see, it kind of travel away there in the sun. You can kind of see a little bit of a bluish tint. It's really thin. It's almost kind of hard to see coming out of the stack. But as it climbs up a little bit, you can see it's kind of bluish, right? That's what we're talking about. That's that thin blue smoke we're talking about. That's good smoke. What I want to cover today is how to maintain temperature when you're trying to smoke something with an offset barbecue like this, offset, and you're trying to control the temperature so that you're staying within the range that you want to keep it and at the same time you're trying to run the type of smoke that provides the best flavor the best outcome and if your smoke is is clean thin blue smoke you're going to get a really great tasting product versus if your smoke's more white and fluffy and you get that white fluffy smoke when you start choking off the fire and that's going to be a major focus on on this cook today and on this video is what happens when you choke the fire down either at the um, exhaust end or at the intake end because you've got a big burning fire in your firebox and you're going to choke it down now this is when you're just using wood wood only um, when you're using charcoal or lump coal it's it's a completely different animal in this case i am using nothing but wood i'm using cherry wood and Every situation is so different. And that's another major point that I wanna make that I, I can't tell you, nobody can tell you exactly what you need to do with your barbecue and your wood and your environment 
nobody can tell you exactly what you need to do to produce the right type of smoke. All I can do is kind of share with you some of the techniques that I use in my situation and hopefully you can implement some of this information in your situation. And, and, and even in my situation, what I do today might be different from what I have to do tomorrow because of changes in temperature, weather, wind, um, humidity, the type of wood I'm using, what I'm cooking, everything, everything. And it requires a lot of practice and a lot of knowledge of all these, these skills combined so that you know how to react and what to do when your temperature's not where you want it or if the wood's not burning the way it needs to burn. All right, getting ready to do a cook this morning. Gonna do uh, baby back pork ribs. It's gonna be six hours. And I gotta tell you, what goes on that great is more important than what goes on that great. And the reason why is because what you do on this grate right here can completely ruin what's happening over here. So it's extremely important that this side is done right. And when it comes to smoking meat on an offset smoker or any other type of smoker where the heat is indirect and you're cooking the food by letting that hot smoky air blow over it at a low temperature for a long time, if the quality of that hot smoky air is not good, then your food will not be good. Funny thing is, you might think that it is good because you just don't know. So I wanna just, I wanna plead with you to give this a shot. Think about this. If, just, just try this, okay? If, you know, unless you're already doing this, maybe you got it down, but this is not for you then, all right? So look. Today I'm going to cook with only wood, no charcoal whatsoever. I don't like, to, honestly, I don't like to mix charcoal and wood anymore because charcoal or lump coal, it just burns differently than wood. So it's easier for me to control the temperature and maintain the temperature that I'm trying to hit when I'm only using one product, either just charcoal or just lump coal or just wood. So I used to start a, a charcoal bed with lump coal and then add wood on top of that. But because they burn differently, I don't do that anymore. Okay. So this is cherry wood and this is cherry wood that I actually just split this morning. See your various sizes. I wanted some that are, that are thicker and bigger. I'll peel that bark off before I throw it on there. I wanted some that are thin, some that are really thin. And I've got a nice little mixture here. All this wood started off this morning looking just like this. Whole logs. Okay. And I just cut these in half with a chainsaw. And then split them with a little hand axe. So one of those camping axes right here on this table. No big deal. Pretty simple. A little bit of work. So the problem is here that I, that I ran into when I was first learning how to smoke is this. These are the, this is a typical log that you might buy at Home Depot or something like that. This is cherry wood that I got from a local wood, firewood distributor that he also specializes in cooking woods. But look at this. See the problem? Let's put that big chunk in there. Look at that. Well, it's hard to build a fire with just one log. So what if you stick two or three in there. Does this make sense to you? What I'm showing you here, right here, okay? If you put a couple big chunks of, log in, of, of wood in here like this, it's hogging up this space, okay? What I'm working with here is a char griller um, smoke and champ. Great barbecue, I, I love this thing. I, I, it, look at it, it's had a ton of use. And I'll show you this, see that? This is what happens when you have a massive fire cooking in here from a couple of big old huge logs, okay? So if you put a couple big old huge logs in here like this and you have this massive fire, 
Now, what do you think the temperature is going to happen over there? The temperature is going to be super high. It's going to be cranking up 500, 600 degrees. So the first thing you're going to do is, oh gosh, I got to choke it down. And you come over here and you take your damper. You know, a lot of times I actually cook with this a little bit open because I want, I can't even open it now, but I want air in there. So you, you close this off and you start choking it out. And then you come up here, you come up here and you start, and you start choking this one down. Okay. You know, so where it's, it's very good. And I used to think that was the way to go, but I was wrong because if that was a pile of charcoal, yeah, that'd be okay. Charcoal burns differently. Charcoal does smolder and it doesn't let out a bunch of nasty smoke. But if you choke this down to where there's no more flames, then you just have nothing but this white smoke that comes, that, that, that comes out and it fills your chamber and your food is soaking in that white smoke. It's really, really thick. And then when you go to eat your food, all you taste is that white smoke. And I think that's one of the problems when it comes to barbecue, because when it comes to smoking food, we're, we're always talked about how we want that, that smoky flavor, right? I don't think really that's a, it's an accurate description. That's what we call it because we don't want to say we want that wood flavor. But why do we use different types of wood if we are looking for a smoke flavor? Because most smoke, honestly, kind of tastes the same. Um, but what you really want is you want that sweetness, that spiciness, that oakiness, or whatever, of whatever type of wood that you put in that. You want that flavor infused into your food with a little hint of smokiness. A little hint, not a bunch. Think about it. What would you rather do? Would you rather take a pile of, of this junk right here and stick that in your mouth and chew it? Maybe lick this grate here, get that ash, put that in your mouth and chew that? Or would you be more comfortable just like, you know, gnawing on a chunk of this? It, it, honestly, this is cleaner. It looks better. I, I don't want that crap in my mouth. But that's the same thing. Now look at this. See that? Little tiny pieces of wood in there. So my point that I'm trying to make right here, right now, is that the wood that you put in your firebox needs to be the appropriate size for your firebox. The sun is making it difficult to get a good shot, but you can see what I'm talking about here. This is a small piece of wood. And that wood is going to burn very easily, full flames, fully burning, without putting off so much heat that I have to start choking off the air. Matter of fact, I can even leave that drawer open a little bit like that because this doesn't have that big door, the big fancy door. This just has a drawer, which is kind of cool. I pull out and empty it, whatever. But I can leave that open, let all the fresh air that I want flow in there. And then the heat is gonna be going up through that hole into the co cooking chamber. And it's not gonna be loaded with all that heavy white smoke that's gonna make the food taste nasty. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna start building a charcoal bed. I don't use charcoal anymore for that. I'm gonna build a charcoal bed, but I'm gonna use wood like this to create that charcoal bed. And I'm gonna start by stacking some wood in there. Like you've probably seen in other videos where they have these big monster, awesome, fancy, super expensive offset smokers and they can put whole logs, literally like six to eight whole logs stacked vertically in their smoke box. It doesn't work in this thing, it's tiny. So you gotta use, do you do the same thing, but with little, little tiny logs like this. So I'm gonna build a little stack with some wood underneath of these little tiny sticks. And I'm gonna get this going on fire. On the, I like to put on top of that one kind of nice, bigger, heavier chunk. And I'm gonna let all that burn down to almost nothing, okay? So you're gonna see what that looks like here right now. All right, real quick, this is what my little burn pile, my little pile of logs looks like. And uh, see, it's not very tall. It's some pretty thin little pieces. I've got some thin little tiny pieces on the bottom and I just got a bunch of paper wadded up in between there. Sorry about the bar barking dog. And uh, got a few couple really thin pieces going this way. I use a little bit of that bark. Uh, and this is just to get all this wood burning really good. It's gonna be fully on fire. 
I'm not going to restrict it at all. I'm not even going to leave this lid open. I'm just going to let it burn. I'm going to let it burn down. I'm going to throw another thicker piece on top. And I'm going to let that burn down. My goal here in this part is to get my cooking chamber. The gauge on top here, I'm going to get this up to over 400 degrees. And I want it to stay up there over 400 degrees for about an hour. That's the preheat stage. I want that way up there before I let the temperature fall. Okay. All right, we're starting to get some flames going here. You know, I think the, the most difficult thing about cooking with wood and an offset smoker is that it's so, it's difficult to predict. It's, it's inconsistent. You have to be constantly on your feet, willing to make changes, thinking about knowing what to do. You know, sometimes you can get your fire, build your, your little stack of wood and light it on fire, just take it off, it burns easy. Sometimes you, sometimes you gotta sit here and blow on it until you freaking faint and fall over. Sometimes you gotta bust out the old little, you know, handy dandy blow torch and give it a little boost to get it going. But you just have to be willing to do it. And the thing is like every, every, every time it's different, even with your own barbecue, every barbecue is different. Every piece of wood is different. The, the days are different. Sometimes it's windy. Sometimes it's hot. Sometimes it's cold. Sometimes it's raining and you have to be able to still get this wood to burn the right way. But I tell you, once you get a nice bed of, of burnt, hot, most, you know, coals in your firebox there, and the temperature in your firebox is nice and hot, then it's easier and easier and easier to maintain the temperature. And you're not gonna maintain the temperature if you wanna maintain good smoke and then get good flavor. You can't maintain the temperature by trying to control what the fire's doing. You need to let the fire burn. If you look into your firebox and you don't see flames, a lot of flames, then that's a major sign of trouble. You should see flames. More flames than what you're seeing right now. I gotta give this a little blow here. It should be more like this. Full on flames. Even this isn't good enough because there's still too much of that white smoke coming off of smoldering pieces that are in there. We, you need full on flames. So the only way that you can control temperature, if you have your wood fully flamed up and burning like that, is by controlling how much fuel there is to burn. That's the key. Making sure that you have just the right amount of wood in that box to maintain your temperature. And, and consistently adding a little bit more at a time so that as one piece burns down, the next piece is lighting up. And when that piece burns down, another piece has already been put in there that's, that's taken off and, and you have to manage that. And, and if you have a, like I said, everyone's different, but like if you have a smaller firebox like I've got on this rig here, sometimes temperature will start to spike a little bit, a little higher than I want it. And what I actually have to do is I have to take a piece of wood out. Maybe I'll grab one of the small pieces that's burning down and take it out. And I have another little barbecue right next to me that I'll set it in there. You know, and I'll just let it burn in the other barbecue or something, or you can have, if you got a little burn pit or whatever, just stick it somewhere out of that box until you need it again, and then throw it back in there. And um, sounds like a lot of work. Guess what? Smoking with an offset smoker a stick burner like this is a lot of work. I just got done sawing logs in half and cutting it with an ax and doing all this stuff. I'm sitting here talking to you, getting all covered with smoke. It's a lot of work, okay? If you are not interested in a lot of work, well, maybe try investing in a more expensive rig, bigger, you know, whatever, easier to maintain, but there's still gonna be a lot of work, okay? Or get a pellet smoker, an electric pellet smoker. And um, hey, yeah, that works too. But personally, I really enjoy the work. I enjoy the product. I enjoy the whole process. And I enjoy the reactions that I get when people taste what comes from this little offset smoker here. So I'm going to let that burn down. And, um, that fire looks like it's to the point where I'm almost ready to go ahead and close that lid and close the lid on the uh, main cooking chamber and start letting the temperature come up. 
So that's the next most important part is I got to let the temperature come up because I've got inside here a couple of water pans full of water because um, I'm cooking baby back ribs today. I want to make sure I maintain moisture in there so that water is going to get hot and start steaming inside there to add moisture to the air. And um, I also want to, that's how I sanitize the, uh, the barbecue by getting those grates really, really nice and hot. It's hot enough to where when I do drop the temperature and I put the ribs on there, just a little tiny bit of sizzle. So I'll uh, come back in a minute. Okay, I feel like the wood that I got in here is burned down enough. It's, it's on fire enough to where I can go ahead and throw another piece of wood on top of there to build an even bigger coal bed and get the temperature in the uh, main cooking chamber nice and hot. Now, did you catch what I just said there? I said, I feel like. That's, that's the hard thing about this. I can't tell you how much wood to use. I can't tell you how long to burn it. I can't tell you anything. You got to figure that on your own because every situation is different. Your firebox might be bigger than my firebox. It might be smaller than my firebox. Box, probably not. This one's pretty small. But, and, and the wood might be different. There's all kinds of different situations. But I can tell by looking at that wood and seeing how it's burning and feeling the heat, literally putting my hand over here and feeling the heat that's coming from there, I feel like it's hot enough, and, and I, from looking at it, it looks to me like it's burnt down enough to where I can go ahead and, and add another piece of wood on there. You know? I, I feel like this is the appropriate side piece, sides piece of wood to put on there, and I'm going to let this one burn down a lot. And by the time this one is all burned down, along with what's in there, then it's going to be about time to... Uh, it would be about time to um, start cooking. Okay, so that one's going to sit in there and catch fire. And see, I was I was hoping by sticking that on there that I wouldn't just squash out the fire and it would it would go away. Um, I've still got flames, and that's great. And that piece of wood that I just put on there is just at air temperature out here. It's cold, so um, it's going to take a minute to catch. And um, other pieces of wood, little little tip. Other, you'll see that I'll do it here in a little bit. Other pieces of wood that I I'm going to be adding on there. Sometimes I'll stack them up here on top of the firebox when the, like right there. So they'll get really hot. So when I put them in there, they'll light on fire really easily. If they get too hot and start smoking, I'll usually move them up and stick them up here. And sometimes the fire will be way over here, a little pile. You'll see, it's gonna be a little tiny pile, way over here. Sometimes I'll stick another couple of logs over here on this side, a couple of chunks. And they're just going to sit there and they're not going to catch on fire because they're not anywhere near the flame, but they're going to get really, really hot. So I can easily then just scoot one over and move one over and add another piece and just kind of rotate them in. So I don't end up with smoldering wood because you can see how that piece of wood is smoldering. See that white smoke that's coming off of there? That's the stuff you don't want. And if you choke down the air, it, it's going to smolder and that white smoke does not taste good if you are if you notice after you eat your barbecue it's like wow this tastes really smoky and then for the next two or three days you're burping and you get that same taste in your mouth coming out of your stomach that's not good you should be able to eat your barbecue enjoy it it's awesome and brush your teeth, go to bed next day, you're, you taste normal again. It shouldn't stick with you like that. So if that's happening, if you're noticing that you're burping up that smoky barbecue taste for the next day or two or three, then you definitely want to rethink what you're doing and how you're, you're creating that smoke. So you don't have that, that thicker white smoke that's coming out of that stack. Update for you. My fire has not been cooperating. This is one of the situations. Right now, the gauge is actually climbing and almost to where I want it. It's moving up and that's good. But for a while, it was hanging out in the uh, lower than 300 range, but it is coming up. And the reason for that was because the wood just wasn't taken off the way it need, I needed it to take off. I ended up adding a couple more pieces and moving it around a little bit. And now it is burning much better. Now this is not what I'm going to be cooking with. This is going to be, this would be crazy to try to cook with this. 
way too much fuel in there. It'll be way too stinking hot. That's not good. Oh, by the way, notice that other piece of wood that's over there in the back that's not on fire, but it's right next to the fire. That's going to be another piece of wood that I'm going to throw on later on when it's time. Hopefully what I have now actually burns down to create that bed of coals that I want. And um, then I can start adding the wood on that I'm going to be cooking with. Might seem kind of wasteful to be just burning up good cooking wood like this. But that's one reason why I buy it in bulk from a local distributor instead of buying the expensive bags of wood at Home Depot. Um, because I kind of go through a lot, but that's just what you do. <laughs> okay, <laughs> That's the way it works. Anyways, that's going to burn down. Sometimes you got to rearrange the wood a little bit to get it all burned down nice. Bingo! There it is. 400 degrees and climbing. Want to see what that firebox looks like? Oh yeah, burning nice. So the temperature is nice and hot where I want it. Guess what? I can't cook with that. I can't cook with this. Nothing I can do about it. The only thing I can do about it is wait. I have to wait until that pile of wood burns down or I remove some of that wood, but that's that would be a lot to deal with right now. So I'm just gonna let that burn down. I'm gonna create that nice little bed of coals and then I'm gonna start carefully adding just enough wood to keep the temperature where I want it. And on this cook, I'm gonna want a grill temperature, not, not gauge temperature, but grill temperature of no more than 250 degrees. I'm shooting for keeping it right between 225 and 200. 200, sorry, 225 and 250. Okay, here's a little progress update for you. See the surface temperature on the grill is coming down to 282 degrees. So I've got a little probe. I'll show you. Right, right there in the middle back side of the grill. The uh, gauge up top here is showing just over 300 degrees. Temperature's falling. It's almost to a uh, temperature where I can cook with. And uh, I want to see the pile here. So it's kind of burned down a little bit. And uh, the wood is starting to turn into that pile of coals that I need and I'm gonna poke it a little bit make sure it's burning good move it around a little bit see how sorry see how that broke up a little bit there poking that up a little bit it's gonna poke that this piece is still kind of a big chunk so I want to make sure to keep that on top of some coals and keep that burning well there's also another piece here that's still a pretty good little log I'm going to make sure that all keeps burning really well so but notice how the pile is a lot smaller than it used to be, and it's burning as, as good as it wants to. It's getting full air, the vent's wide open, and um, I'm gonna make sure that keeps burning. This needs to burn down a little bit more because right now it's getting to the point where it's almost kind of dangerous where it will start smoldering if I let it. So I wanna make sure and break it up a little bit and make sure all the wood is breathing and, and just burning nicely. And this is gonna to have to burn down a little bit more to create more of this, these little pieces of coal. And then I can start putting the wood on there that I'm gonna be using to cook with. But basically, smaller pile of burning wood, lower temperature. That's how it works. I'm not choking down the air. I'm letting it burn. I'm letting it flame up. And I'm just gonna let that wood burn the way it wants to burn, nice and hot and clean, so that the smoke that comes out of the stack and goes in the, that goes through the cooking chamber is nice and clean also. None of that nasty tasting heavy white stuff. See it just by breaking it up a little bit, flame back up. That's what you got to do. You got to kind of maintain it a little bit. You got to work it. You got to work your fire. You got to break it up. You got to add a little bit here and there and you got to keep working it. And yeah, you have to work it through the whole cook. And if you're doing, a six hour rack of ribs, well, that's a lot of work. If you're doing a 12, 14, 16 hour brisket, that's a whole lot of work, but it's worth it in my opinion. If you don't want to do that kind of work, well, then get a pellet smoker. Okay, another update for you. We're getting close to the kind of environment we can cook with. Notice the smoke is thin and bluish, hard to see. The gauge up top here is still just over 300. The gauge at the grate is uh, 268. It's actually climbed three degrees in the last couple of minutes just because I kind of adjusted the wood a little bit. 
we've got uh, a nice looks like hell in there see how there's flames super bright and hot that's cool that's not cool it's hot that's what we want open up the lid yep see we got we got flames it's burning that's good only problem is there's just too much burning still so I still need to let that burn down until the temperature falls and that's where you guys start playing the game of letting the temperature get down to the point where you're starting to add a little bit more wood just to kind of maintain that temperature range of 225 to 250 adding a little bit of wood maybe even taking a little bit of wood out if you added too much and keeping the temperature down just by keeping that burning pile of wood small that's the only way to control it cannot close that cannot close that gotta let both of those fully wide open breathe if you've got a door style then leave that door open um sometimes i like i said I pull that drawer out a little bit to make sure enough airflow is going in there that's how you control the i mean we can't control you, you need the fire to burn you need flames you need that wood just burning fully i'm not going to get into the science of all that crap about what comes out of the wood when it's at a certain temperature burning smoldering whatever you know there's there's plenty of other videos on that all i'm telling you to keep it simple is you got to have flames make sure your wood is fully burning as, as hot as it wants to burn and that's how you keep your quality of smoke good and the only thing you can do to control the temperature is limit the amount of burning material you have in there and then you have a much better quality barbecue it's just kind of difficult and you have to figure out on your own for your own rig with your wood and your environment and your temperature and everything is going on in your life you got to figure out how to make that happen hopefully some of these tips help you but that's that's all I can say. It's just there's no secret, you know, like magic formula. If you do this, 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 and this exactly this way, it's gonna result. No, it, it's gonna be it's gonna vary, and you're gonna have to work it and figure it out and experiment with it. Maybe even try and doing this without cooking anything, and you know, a few times and seeing what happens. That way, you can kind of get used to it. And there's going to be situations where, oh shit, emergency, I've got, I've, you have to open up the cooking chamber and let it air out because you've got a nasty mess of, of, um, white smoke in there and you, you know, you can't let it stay like that for too long. You know, maybe you got an emergency, grab a shovel and start pulling burning material out of your firebox, you know, or maybe sometimes you got to, you know, blow on it or take a blowtorch and kind of get it going again because it's kind of smoldering out. Sometimes you got to clear out the area where the underneath the fire grate where there's ash, it's starting to build up and it's starting to choke it out. So it's not able to breathe well enough. There's all kinds of little adjustments that you can make to keep that fire burning. But that's, that's the most important thing is keep that fire burning nice and hot just small so you keep your temperature low that's it so i think this is kind of a cool thing to share with you this is an adjustment that i had to make right now because i have a certain time that i need this food to be done cooking and honestly i started too late because i'm freaking messing around here making a stupid video the temperature was too hot now the temperature is at 235 that's great the temperature was too stinking hot and it was taking too long for that wood to burn down so that I could stick the ribs that I'm cooking today onto the grill. So what did I do? I opened this up and I took out that big old chunk that was taking forever to burn down. That one little log in there on that little bed of coals is producing that kind of heat. Uh, freaking sun. There it is. 236. Okay. That's just that one little log burning away there. Okay, I've got another piece of wood in there on standby. It's hot. And as soon as I put it on top of that fire, it's going to catch fire. And that's great. Look at the smoke coming out of there. Super thin. Super thin. Hard to see. That's what we're looking for. And you know what else? I've got a cool little backup piece of wood ready to go. Burning. And my little burn pit over here. It's just chilling there. It's still smoldering away. And when I put that back in the burn box, if I do, and I probably will, it'll catch fire right away and it'll be all good. And I'll still be getting the kind of heat that I need. 
So now I play the little game. I've got one piece of wood on standby there. I'm gonna take another piece and I'm gonna put it up here. Gonna make sure it gets nice and hot. And I like to vary it a little bit. Maybe I'll get a one that's slightly bigger, maybe one that's slightly smaller and uh, keep those kind of warming so that when it's time to put them, when I need them and I put them on there, if they're warm, if they're hot, 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 they're going to catch fire real easily. So that piece that's, that's tucked away over there that's super hot, starting to even turn a little bit black, when I need that one and I put on there, it's going to light up and I'm going to get instant heat from it. I'll probably take one of these guys and I'll put it down in there also. And I'm just going to keep that process going. As the temperature starts to fall because that piece of wood is burning down and not getting the, the uh, producing the heat that I need anymore, then I'll go ahead and just add the next piece. And I just keep doing that. I might have to do it every 15 minutes or 20 minutes or 30 minutes. I don't know. It kind of depends. It depends on a lot of different factors, uh, the, the conditions out here today and everything. And it's a little bit of work. And I'm going to be doing this for the next six hours. All right, a little update for you. It's been a little over a half hour since then. I, I did add that piece of wood back in there. Temperatures dropped down to about 223. So, see, that big piece is still in there. It's kind of burned down a little bit. And uh, coals are there, you know, but we've got fire. That's good. I'm gonna take this piece that I put in here. I'm gonna let it catch on fire. This, I'm choosing, see, there it goes. I'm choosing a small piece on purpose. Reason I'm doing that is because there doesn't look like there's a whole lot of coals in there and I want to make sure I don't run out of coals. So I'm putting in a small piece that'll burn down a lot faster. I'm going to have to be careful with this one because it's also taken off really hot and fast. So I want to make sure that it doesn't get too crazy with the temperature. But there we go. These big old tongs I'm using to move the wood around. It's kind of easy. Uh, temperature is going to start coming up here because I opened up that firebox. The temperature has dropped down to 214, but with all that flame going on in there, it's going to start coming up pretty quickly. Here's 217, there's 221, so it's going to get right back up to that zone that I want it. Smoke's looking good, and I'm going to. It's going to take a while for that to burn down, and then I'll just move the next piece in. I was getting kind of nervous for a second when I put that other piece of wood on there. The temperature spiked up to 249, which is still below 250, and it seems like it's settling back down. And uh, things are looking good here. Let's take a peek inside the firebox. I'm not opening up the cooking chamber, but yeah, look, see, burning nice. I don't know if you noticed there, but I threw in another piece of wood over there off to the side with that other piece. So still got a couple pieces of wood on standby that are nice and hot. In the meantime, I've been running around with this little thing on my hip here and doing stuff in the house and, you know, just doing my business and whatever. And uh, if the temperature spikes up too high, this thing will beep at me. So I know, got to get out here and make a quick adjustment. Um, so it's not like I'm sitting here just staring at the temperature gauge all the time. Um, but I do got to come check on it frequently. All right, temp, temp came down to about 225. So I went ahead and grabbed a one of the little pieces from over there and moved over into the burn pile and it lit right up and we'll keep on going. All right, I'm in the house and this thing started squawking at me, saying the temperature dropped to, right now, 221. Let's go have a look and see what's going on in the box. Clear that. And, uh, still got flame, but yeah, not enough burning material there to create the kind of heat that I need. So right now, time is, hey, it's two o'clock. So that last piece of wood I put in there, by the way, that was at uh, 145. And the time before that was at 130. So what's happening here, it's about every 15 minutes, I am needing to do that. Throw another piece on. Thought I'd, I think that's kind of important to share with you because it's about every 15 minutes I'm needing to feed the wood. <sighs> Sorry about all the camera movement here. It's not easy to do this stuff and uh, do it properly and talk and video at the same time. I'm not a pro, 
a photographer or videographer or anything. I'm just a dude that likes to barbecue. So there you go. All right. So it's two o'clock now and uh, probably another 15 minutes. That thing will start squawking at me again. I'm going to grab another piece of wood to stick over there next to that other piece of wood. So I've always got them on standby. Okay, check it out. It's only been a few minutes since I put that last piece of wood in there and temperature is spiking and it's squawking at me. It's 261. That's starting to get a little uncomfortable. So, what do I do? Hmm. Let's have a look here. Oh yeah. That's burning real well. A couple things I can do. Well, I could take out a piece of that wood. Put that down. Rather not do that, especially the way it's burning so hot. Well, I could leave that lid open for a little bit till it burns down a little. Still plenty of heat in the cook box. It's already coming down a little bit now. It's down to 255 just by doing that. Another thing I might try is I might try pulling that drawer out a little bit, which you know physically moves the fire away from the um, cooking chamber. That might help a little. Worst case scenario is I need to take a piece of wood out. Not that big a deal. Grab my tongs or, you know, fireplace tongs or whatever. Probably grab the smaller piece that's in the back there, pull it out. Try that. Yeah, we've got a little fire escaping out the outside there. and It's going to heat up the side of the box a little bit. Yeah, big, no big deal. And, uh, but... Still got good clean blue smoke coming out of the stack. And temperature in the box is now 241. Ah, I think the uh, crisis has been averted. We're looking all right. I think I'm gonna leave this like this and see what happens. Uh, no big deal. 245, so I'm gonna keep an eye on it. If I need to take a piece out, I'll take a piece out. Wait a few minutes, put it right back in. That's it. I just gotta keep doing this for the next, well, five hours now, I guess. It is uh, 2.05, 2.05. That's what happened. Why? Just because that piece of wood that I stuck on there was kind of big. But nice thing about that slightly bigger piece of wood, if I'm careful, that slightly piece of, that slightly bigger piece of wood's gonna burn a little bit longer, so maybe, it might be 220 or maybe even 230 by the next time I need to add another piece. I don't know. We'll see. But uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on it. And this little remote here is uh, very, very helpful. This is a great thing to have because now I don't really need to pay attention to the box. I'm just going to clip this onto my belt and um, go about my business. And if it starts squawking at me again, I'll come out and make an adjustment. Temperatures at 247 right now, and I thought this was kind of funny, so I wanted to share it with you. I was, it's it's only been, uh, let's see here, it's been 215. It's been 10 minutes, I guess, since the last time I was videoing, and the temperature was at 250, 249. It was slowly coming down. Everything was good. Remember, I pulled the side box out. I'm inside. All of a sudden, temperature spikes up to 270. I was like, what the hell's going on? So I come out and look. And remember that other, that there was two pieces of, well, there was two pieces of wood there. Well, one was a little bit too close to the burning wood and it caught fire. <laughs> so I had to grab it and pull it out of there and uh, to get temperature back down. So a uh, cool little thing to have that, that thing handy. But um, yeah, it was just too hot. It caught fire. So I took it out and hey, we're all good. Life is good. Okay, 228, and the temperature did fall to just below 225. And um, I went ahead and grabbed that piece of wood that caught on fire, stuck it on there, there it goes. Okay, 245, and the temperature's down to 222. Let's see what's going on here. Smoke's looking good. Yep. Not a whole lot burning anymore. Just gonna put that right over there. Let they catch fire. Sorry about the camera movement. Got another one in there on backup. 
we're good. All right, it's now 2.58. I'm uh, about two minutes away from being two hours into this six hour cook. Temperature's at 229 right now. Smoke's looking perfect. Piece of wood on standby, piece of wood inside. Kind of getting the gist of what's going on now, about every 15 minutes, um, putting in uh, fresh pe uh, a piece of wood onto the fire box. It's already uh, onto the fire that's already heated and putting another one in line to get it hot and get it ready to go. And you know, every now and then I maybe have to open up that drawer a little bit just to let a little of the heat escape or maybe even just prop the hood open a little bit, let the heat escape. See, look, there's fire burning in there. Things are looking good. Um, temperature's still a little too high for me to worry about putting on another piece yet. So I'm just gonna keep letting that burn down a little bit. Another piece going on pretty soon though. It's now 3.15 and temperature's at 2.32 at the grate. And uh, look at that, I just wanna show you, look at that, that smoke. See how nice and thin and blue it is? And the fire is burning great, the temperature is doing great, and it smells really good out here. I think that's, that's the point I wanna drive home. The entire time that this food has been cooking in here, these ribs have been cooking, is that it's just, there's this really, really good smell out here and it doesn't smell like smoke. It smells like, like the wood, like the cherry wood. It's slightly sweet, slightly spicy. It's just, it smells really good. And it's not this thick, nasty smoke smell that I'm smelling. It's something completely different. And it's just, you know, there's just this aroma in the air and it's fantastic. And that's the same flavor that I'm going to have in the, the ribs. So, um, temperature it's it came up to 244 that's what it does it just kind of goes back and forth a little bit does does that fluctuation affect the meat i don't think so I think 25 degree fluctu fluctuation is not a big deal i don't know check check it out try it for yourself someday i think i'm going to put a traeger and uh, i'm going to put this um char griller side by side and i'm going to uh do a smoke off and and do the exact same process and see how it goes and see you know what people think which one tastes better um but uh this has been awesome this has been one of my smoothest cooks ever and uh, we're gonna keep on going the time is 325 and we're at 221 temperature just fell down kind of all of a sudden Smoke is looking good, smells really good out here, and oh yeah, look, there's not much going on there anymore. It's kind of burned down a little bit. So, I'm gonna take this piece here and move it on over. Ah, oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. There we go. Let that... It's burning. Let's that back up. It's almost time for me to take out these ribs and wrap them. You're not gonna see all that, but I'm gonna let you have a quick peek, all right? Quick peek at what's going on in here. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. Yep, that's looking good. Gonna be putting on some uh, chicken wings here pretty soon too to cover the rest of those grates. And uh, it's gonna be good eating tonight. So just want to let you know, just a couple of minutes after I stuck in that other piece of wood, temperature spiked again, and right now it's at 249, so that's great. So all I did was come over and just adjust the wood. I opened up the drawer a little bit, let a little heat out of the box, you know, it's all good. No big deal. 341, and oh, temperature's down to 220. What happened here? We want more wood? Or we just kind of need a little... Little toss here. That's still a pretty significant piece there. I think it just needs a little toss. Might kind of. Sorry, I keep moving the camera. I'm trying to pay attention to what I'm cooking here. Yeah. About time to catch the other one on fire. Almost. Okay, it's about 4.15 now, and the firebox is asking for a little more fuel. Hopefully by now you're kind of getting the gist of things here. Basically, about every 15 minutes is what I am having to do with my barbecue in my conditions. 
and um, what you might have to do with your barbecue and your conditions might be different. If I were using smaller pieces of wood, uh, might also be different there. If I used maybe like apple sized pieces of wood, like what comes in the bags that you can get at the Home Depot, the chunks. Oh, that would make a difference also. My goal here is to use wood, you know, the, the biggest pieces of wood that I can that aren't going to cause a major temperature spike that are going to burn a while. Smaller pieces, you know, maybe there won't be as much fluctuation in temperature. Maybe that it might be every five or ten minutes I'm having to throw another apple-sized piece onto the pile. You know, and I can cut this wood to whatever size I want. But, um, this is how I'm working it and it works well for me but the most important thing is that is to leave that vent wide open and the intake wide open and let that wood burn let that fire go so you have a nice clean blue smoke and um, I mean that is if you're smoking meat. This is what I like to do when I'm smoking meat and I'm using just wood. It's a different situation if you're grilling. It's a different situation if you're using charcoal or lump coal. And you know, if matter of fact, right now the ribs that are in the cooking chamber are wrapped. And, and when they're wrapped, it doesn't matter what quality of smoke is. All that really matters is the temperature in that case. Um, but um, I'm going to continue running good clean smoke because in a little bit, I'm going to put some chicken wings on the grill, you know? So in this case, I want to make sure to keep the good clean wood. I want a good consistent smoke and flavor. And so I'm going to just keep doing this. I'm going to get the chicken wings on there. They're going to smoke for a couple hours. So I want them to taste good too. That's what I'm doing in this case. Uh, but I really, I think the point I'm trying to make here is, uh, you got to do whatever you got to do to keep your smoke, uh, thin blue, keep the temperature in the range that you want it to be. And sometimes it requires just a little adjustments here and there and figuring out what works good for you. What type of wood to use, what size logs to use all based on your, your firebox here and, um, and your conditions. So hopefully this has been helpful for you and I want you to try it. I want you actually, you know, to practice this and tr and see what happens. Um, matter of fact, uh, you know, run a barbecue where you're really choking it down and you got that white smoke all the time and make a bunch of ribs with it. I like practicing with ribs because that's where you can really tell the difference. But um, practice that, you know, and then, then save some. Maybe put some in the freezer or something and then the next weekend do another rack. But do it in a com with this style with the smoke staying nice and thin and clean and blue and try that and then bust out some of the ones from the previous cook okay heat them up i actually do cut up ribs and wrap two at a time in, in tin foil put them in the freezer and then that way whenever i want i could pull out a pair of ribs throw them in the oven still in the tin foil and aluminum foil and i leave them in the oven at uh, 350 well, about 400 degrees for about an hour and that heats them up really nice Take them out, unwrap them, eat them. They're perfect. They're delicious. Um, try that and compare what you cooked before with what you cook this time using using these tips. And hey, see which one you like better. And whatever one you like better, go with it. But um, I think it might be uh, you might be surprised if you've been choking out the... Um, the wood, to, you know, either either closing off the upper stack or closing off the intake to try to control temperature that way. You might be surprised the the difference that you get when you just let that fire burn and control the temperature by controlling the amount of fuel there is to burn. Gotta hand it to you. If you made it all the way through this video, you are a badass and committed to uh, some awesome barbecuing in the future. And uh, thank you. Thank you very much for watching this whole video. I appreciate you very much. Please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and uh, hit the like button too. If you liked what you saw, share it with your friends. And um, I'll got, I got more stuff coming. Send me your comments, your questions. If there's something else you want me to cover, I'm totally happy to do it. 
And uh, this has been fun. Now it's time to crack open a beer and start relaxing because trying to video while doing this stuff is a real pain in the ass. But I, um, I'm glad to do it. So thank you very much. Take care.